بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My wonderful people السلام عليكم ورحمة الله My good brothers and my wonderful sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله This is your brother عبد السلام أبو حنيفة You are the world shakers Believe it or not We live in a time where things are not quite as we would like them to be So much is out of hand We think when we look at ourselves that we do not have what it takes to change the world. Well, actually, we can. Think of it. The greatest people that shook the world, people that have made a huge difference in the world, matter of science, peace, writings, all of them were the children to a parents. Those parents didn't know that their children would be great. However, time came where things have changed and suddenly the kids do something absolutely beyond belief. They left their marks on the world. I'll take for instance Albert Einstein. Did his parents know that one day this little kid of theirs would become a man that would change the way we look at physics, the way we look at the cosmos, at the universe? Absolutely not. Yet, they treated him in a manner that he was the most beloved thing into their eyes. And he grew to be. And a lot of times when we look at the world around us, we think like a lot of it came by accident. We are influenced by the non-Muslims, their way of thinking. Is there such a thing called accidents? Or is that destiny? We as Muslims, we know that there is no such thing called accident. Even in the driving way, when we are outside there driving our cars, and we have an accident, what we call an accident. What do we mean by accident? Think of it. What it means is, in the world of, of, <laughs> of the world the way it is, is this thing happened without us meaning it to happen. It wasn't meant to happen, but it happened. And then people took that as an accident. If you walk in the street and you hit somebody, shoulder to shoulder, and you tell me, go, I apologize, that was an accident. In those little words that we say, there is a shirk that we Muslims commit every single day. Nothing at all is called accident. Not at the time of our beloved Prophet Not now and not in 10,000 years. There is no such a thing called it happened as an accident. So what it is the right understanding? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran says, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَاهُ بِقَدَرٍ And everything has been created by a qadr meaning by a proportional decree. For instance, you're walking in the street and you trip and you fall. That was not an accident. That was something that Allah had decreed that it should happen to you. And then he decreed how hard your fall would be or how easy it would be on you. You meet somebody and you live with them for 10 years and then problems start to occur. That was no accident. That was a decree by Allah wa ta'ala. Put on earth for a reason or another. What you can make out of that depends on you. You walk outside your home only to discover that you left your phone at home. Was that an accident or a destiny? The true believer see that as an act of destiny because he knows and you know and she knows nothing happens by accident. Not a thing at all. Everything is totally, perfectly planned by Allah. Allah says in the Quran, مَا فَرَّطْنَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ we have, we have not neglected or left in the book, and this is al-lawha al-mahfoud, the preserved tablets. Not a thing. 
So what does that mean? I'll tell you how I deal with those little things that annoy. I always link things back to my Tawheed. If I am outside and I left my door and I'm going out there only to realize that I actually forgot to pick up my phone. I don't get angry. I don't qualify that as an act of accident. I think of it as an act of destiny. And I say to myself, Subhanallah, that does not forget. So you see what I've done here? I straight away acknowledge that I, as a human being, possess the defect of forgetting. Allah is perfect, He doesn't forget. That earns me a big brownie point for my Tawheed. And then I walk back home to pick up whatever I forgot. And then I ask myself, Allah has written that this happens. What it is in it that would benefit me? And then I start looking into this and then I find nothing. And then I say to myself, you know what? If the whole thing happened so that I go through this thinking process of making the heat of Allah, of thinking of what Allah wants out of it, then that is great of a price, priceless, that Allah gave me that two, three minutes to actually prove that my Tawheed is alive. I walk down the street and, and then I see a car. My eyes haven't fallen on this car by accident. Remember, we don't believe in accidents. We believe in destiny. And then I ask myself, Allah made me look at this car. What it is that Allah wants me to learn from this experience? And I look at the car and then I come up with something. And go, subhanAllah, that has given man the ability to find such a color. It takes a lot. Here I am today. I don't know how they make the black color or the green color. Yet there is a whole science behind it. And then I go thinking about colors and suddenly I find myself discovering what Allah has created. The knowledge that he has given to somebody else. And then I recruit that very safe moment of where my eyes fell on that car, which I could have just treated as an accident. You are walking in the street and suddenly you hit a pebble. Was that an accident? Certainly not. Yes, to the non-Muslim there and the one who is weak in his faith and aqidah and belief, he would think like it was just a mere act. He just hit a pebble. To me, and to you, it must not be. My thinking process should go. What it is that Allah wants me to learn from me hitting the pebble? What it is? And then I go into my analytical mode to find out something that pays off with my tawheed, that strengthen my tawheed. Here is an experience that happened to me one day. We were in a masjid, we prayed Salat al-Fajr, and then we were three people, four people including myself, and then I said to the brothers there, hey, uh, do you guys want a, a hot chocolate? And they said, no. I said, look, I can go upstairs and make us some hot chocolate. I went upstairs, and as I was climbing the stairs, I just realized that these stairs were steep. But I looked at them from the angle of, Allah made me think about the stairs this moment here. That was not an accident. What does Allah want to teach me? What it is that Allah wants me to get from that experience? And I looked at the stairs. I've, I've known these stairs. I've worked this, in this Islamic center forever. And I know them. But why this particular morning that Allah gave me that? I went upstairs, made the hot chocolates, came. I brought two cups, gave them to the people. And on the second trip, the predominant thought was, what does Allah want to teach me by making me pay attention to the stairs? Those stairs, I've seen them forever before. And suddenly, something dawned upon me, a gift, a divine gift. Unbelievable. I'll share it with you. I said to myself, and this is all what Allah taught me on that day, that there is no such thing called accident, it's destiny. 
As I was coming upstairs, the sunnah is to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Whenever you go upstairs or up or something, always make takbir. That is the sunnah. When you are coming downstairs or downhill or whatever, from a mountain down to a valley, you always say Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And suddenly I found myself thinking as to, as I was climbing, I was saying Allahu Akbar, and the question came like this, why do I say Allahu Akbar as I climb the stairs, and Subhanallah as I go downstairs, and the answer was written there. Because every night, when Allah wa Taala descends to the first heaven in a manner that befits His Majesty, that act, me as a human being, would think of his descending here as I descend the stairs. And that is why we say, Subhan Allah. We purify Allah as we go downstairs in case we might think that when Allah descends to the heavenly skies, that he descends the way we descend stairs. And I started shaking. Allah. And then, Automatically, as I climbed up the stairs, I made the takbir of Allah, grandify Allah, because Allah is more divine that I should imagine him climbing up back to the seventh heaven. And then I called the sheikh, and I told him, Ya sheikh, this is what Allah made me discover this morning on my trip, and he was mesmerized, he said, for all my years, that I thought it never ever occurred my mind to link this with that. If I had thought that what I discovered on the stairs was a pure accident, or I've been oblivious to it, Allah would never have rewarded me with that knowledge. My question to you, my brothers and my sisters, how many times did Allah want to teach you something of huge value, and you knocked it down by thinking it was an accident? You're in the kitchen, my sister. You want to cut a piece of meat or a piece of bread, and the knife drops from your hands, and you go just and pick it up. Me? I never do that. Even if I am at my desk and the pen falls off my hand on the floor, I always ask, what does Allah want to teach me with this action? Even if I get nothing, just the fact that I ask that question and I go into my analytical studying mode, imagine the rewards of Allah or what he can give you there. And I have learned gazillions upon my gazillions on great things. A lot of my discoveries, a lot of my inspirations, a lot of my talks, a lot of things happened in those moments where the majority of mankind would call them an accident and where I call them a touch of destiny. So from now on, never ever think of anything as an accident. Even if you are driving and someone hits you, don't call it an accident. Call it a touch of destiny. Your child wakes up at 2 o'clock in the morning crying. Don't call it I touched him by accident. Tell that it was a touch of destiny. Everything that happens to you every second of the day is a message of Allah. You fail to notice it or you fail to learn from it, or you succeed to learn from it. If you are behind the bus, don't say, I'm stuck behind the bus. Say, what does Allah want to teach me while putting me here behind the bus? You have a small argument with your husband, with your wife. Think of it. What does Allah want to teach me here? When you are asleep at night and you suddenly wake up, your eyes are big, wide open. Don't say, I lost sleep. That is not true. Think of it. What does Allah want to teach me? And so on and so forth. I pray to Allah that this is accident versus touch of destiny will change your life just like it is changing my life. It does change it every second of the day. Always ask when something happens that, does, that you have not planned for it and it happens, what does Allah want to teach me? I pray to Allah wa ta to bless you all and give you opportunities to discover the great secrets of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach you. You are today in this group here. Ask yourself, what does Allah want from me that he put me in this group? You are a Muslim. Ask yourself, 
What does Allah want to touch me, to show me, to guide me to? Ask. Even when the day you eat chicken, ask yourself, why did I eat chicken instead of fish? What does Allah want to teach me by eating fish? Learn to ask the right questions and watch how Allah will open your eyes to beautiful things, things you have never, ever thought possible. I leave you with these thoughts. Never accident. Everything is a touch of destiny. I love you all. Spend a wonderful day. Until tomorrow, my brothers and my sisters, have a great, wonderful day. You are the world shakers. Go shake the world. What does Allah want from you when he has made you listen to this talk? Food for thought. This is again your brother, Abdul Salam, Abu Hanifa. Telephone number is 078-76-40-8786. My brothers, as usual, listen, learn, live, and promote. Send my talks to people. Let them join us. Let us become a force a reckoning, a great positive force, and show the world that we Muslims don't believe in accidents. We believe in a touch of destiny. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.